on Splendor in 24. What? It's 25. <laughs>Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Converse. I'm Italo. And I'm Bradley. And this is our 90th take. Just about so, I think this is the 82nd. No, you mind, you mind explaining why that is, Bradley? It's because you have the giggles. It's because I'm being a dumbass, and he's not helping because when I'm serious, he's not, and when he's serious, I'm not, so... We can't, we can't have a moment where we're both serious, mainly because it's 1.23 a.m., and we're trying to get this good. So... And I think that we should not do it tonight, but you know, we're already doing it, so we're already, it's, in, it's in progress. Our topic tonight happens to be video games, but I have one simple question for you, Bradley. What is it, Itzlo? It's an emulator considered an actual console well dolphin that dolphin program i think a lot of people know what that is it's where you can play yes. wii games and gamecube games and it's basically a console it's practically a wii but does it do they usually run as well as the console well Sometimes there'll be a few downfalls where you'll see some missing textures or maybe the shadows won't load in all the way. But just about so, they run as good as console. But it's better to have the actual console because, I don't know, it's, in my opinion, I like the nostalgia of holding the controller and like having the blow into the cartridge and stick it in there and having it jammed a little bit and you have to re-take it out and pop it back in there and you have to keep doing that. You ever had that problem with the N64? I did. Yeah, but I never really blew in the cartridges. I just shook them, which is probably a really bad thing to do, considering, like, well, those cartridges can last, like, a nuclear explosion, probably. Oh, yeah. I, I, dro I dropped so many cartridges. You're right about the emulators, though. The bad thing about the emulators is that, like, once you start playing a game and you get so enthralled in it, but then you realize that your computer is, like, on fire... <laughs> Yeah. Your computer's like you touch your computer, like the, the like the metal part of your computer if you have it anyway, and it's like burning. Mhm. Mm you get concerned for your computer's safety, and then yeah. It's because it's so overheated because you're running the emulator. Yeah, but you would think that like a Wii wouldn't have the same specs as your computer. It would have them. It wouldn't be as powerful, so it would it would not hurt much. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you, what do you think? Do you think an emulator? is a console should be considered that well yes and no because if you know there are consoles dedicated to be emulators so like the own their operating system has na have native emulators so if you run a rom file from it it will just run that particular emulator and you can play nes games on the go that's true i mean i have in the other room i have a handheld nes console player thingy I don't remember the name of it, but I could basically stick my NES games in it, and I have a mobile NES that has a screen and audio and everything. But that's not really an emulator. That's just a portable SNES. Yes. So what I'm talking about is things like the, um, hmm, what was it called? I think the Canoe by Wiz or something? I'm not sure. I don't Part think I know what that is. I'll give you some information later, and that information should be linked down below. And a picture of the said device should be on screen right now, and some and some specs about it. But it was a device, a small little device, about the size of a Game Boy Micro, I'd think. Mm -hmm. And it can play, actually, no, a little bit longer, like the bottom screen of a DS long. And it could play any emulators from, like, arcade emulators, which are, like, I mean, they emulate basically the cabinets, so, like, mm -hmm. any any game of that. Pac-Man and all that? Pac-Man and all that, yes. And it can be NES, SNES, Game Boy. That's cool. That, like, N64 was supported, but apparently wasn't that good. Mm. But these were basically little consoles that had their own, basically, OS. And, you know, they would, they would run. They would run the NES games, the SNES games that you drew at it with little to no problems. Wow. So... Have you had an experience with emulation? What's the last experience you had? I played Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, emulated on my um, PC. 
Now, we have to talk about something for emulation, though. The legality of it. Mm -hmm. Do you honestly think that by downloading a ROM from coolrom.com, is that infringing copyright or breaking any piracy laws just to play on an emulator if you do not own the original game? That was my question when I first got into emulations. I was wondering, is this actually legal? And what it told me on the webpage, it says if you had the game before, like let's say if I owned Mario 64, it's okay, I can play it. But that's still violating the copyright law, in my opinion, because you're not paying for it, and this is not a legal thing through Nintendo. Nintendo's not just giving this game away. That's very true. But, you know, people, this day and age especially, they're not going to be like, admitting that they that they don't have the game they're gonna be like yeah i totally have the game because you can't really enforce these laws i mean they also have a thing for torrents and it's like it's not okay to, to have torrents but they're not gonna be coming on everyone's doors and knocking I mean like yeah if you have torrents you're under arrest they're not gonna be doing that so people just break these rules yeah because they don't because they don't care i mean nothing can happen to them exactly I mean, it's not like as soon as you go into Cool Realm, you have to scan a picture of your game cartridge to make sure that you have it. Yes, exactly. So anyway, uh, something else about um, about video games. Mm -hmm. Have you ever played a game that was like really good, or that you thought was really good, but then like everyone else seemed to like despise? Yes, I love the original Sonic Adventures games. And please please talk about this. Okay, well, I played the original Sonic Adventure games um, on the old GameCube, I think it was. That was a long time ago. And I fell in love with the game because yes. I just, basically, I didn't have that many games for the GameCube. I do now, but um, back then I didn't. And this was like the only one I played, and I loved it so much. But I really didn't have friends or anyone I knew back then. But now, if you go onto any forum... They, all they do is make fun of the old Sonic Adventure games, and I still love playing the Sonic Adventure games. I have Sonic Adventures, the first one, on my Xbox 360, and I think it still runs as good as it did back when it was on the GameCube or the Sega Genesis, depending on which platform you played it on. How about you? Was there any game that you... Well, I enjoyed the... Um, what was it called? It, this was very recent. It was... 007 Legends, I believe. I actually enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And, like, as time went on, I started to, like, like it even, like, like it less. But, you know, at first, when people started making fun of it, I was like, but why? It's a, it's a solid game. And, you know, it was... that That's basically the only example I can really give. But, you know, it was a solid game, in my opinion. It definitely was, in the sense, it was a, it was a Call of Duty reskin, but... I liked it because it had the James Bond name on it. So Yes, I know you love the James Bond. <laughs> and what did you like again? Breaking Bad. Oh, I love Breaking Bad. I can talk about that for centuries. But I have I have a question for you. Backwards compatibility. Do you think the old PlayStation 4 or the Xbox 360 or Xbox 1, sorry, they should be able to play Xbox 360, Xbox games, or PlayStation 3, 2, and 1 games. Well, let me, like, for people who don't know backwards compatibility, it's when, for example, a PS3 can play PS2 and PS1 games, or, like, if a newer console can play just the older, just the older games from that same series. So, like, a PS4 should be able to play PS3 games, but for some reason it doesn't. Because Sony is really smart. Yeah, they want to keep making their money. <laughs> Obviously. So they're going to just have this program where you can buy the PS3 games. Mm -hmm. But that's not really... It's not really... Not really good, because then, like, all these games that you already own, so... Yeah. I mean, my personal opinion, if I were to buy a PlayStation 4, I would love to take my PlayStation 3 game of, um... Of, um... Just had a name of a game, but I just lost it. But basically, oh, take a game and put I it in there. Don't own a PS3, so I don't. I don't own. Fun. I have an Xbox 360 and a Wii U. Come fight me. And <laughs> and I should mention he's like against every product company that I like. So 
I am not. I like the PlayStation 4 better than the Xbox That's One. That's the only one. You don't like Apple. I hate Apple. Apple right now like is just Apple, copying it, Samsung. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you have an iPad mini, so how's I that? do, and I I mean I like my iPad mini because it's a nice little tablet. But I was watching YouTube today and it was a Samsung Note tab or like it was like a Note commercial and it went back to old reviews of the Note when it first came out a long time ago and people were saying it's like you're holding a tablet phone and it's like it's so bulbous and no one likes it and now they're saying like oh Apple's is copying us and it, it was rather funny and I thought that was hilarious and I figured that would be excellent to now, drive my point home this that is, this Samsung is going to is change this it's going to change the subject by a lot because we're staying away from video games. I know. But <laughs> I'm just saying. The reason Apple did this, the reason Apple did the whole thing. Because it was working with, for Android? No, the reason they did it because people were complaining, oh, your phone's too small. I can't use it. It's horrible. And then when they make it bigger, people complain because they're copying Samsung. What do you want? Like, honestly. Apple should just I mean, do its own thing. Take risks. Yeah, but like, okay. It's it's like you people complain whether or not you do it right or not. So I don't know what this person I don't know what these people want. I mean, before they were like, if you make a bigger phone, I'll definitely buy it and prefer the iPhone. Then they were like, it's too big and copying Samsung. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can tell like the iPhone six plus was actually no the regular iPhone six was an afterthought because they were probably going to do the iPhone six plus as like. Their mm -hmm. main thing, but then we're like, if we just do this, we're probably going to be infringing so many laws. Yeah, the iPhone six plus is the bigger <laughs> one, right? And then the iPhone six, like the regular sized one for Apple. Yes, of course. Okay, I just wanted to get that shirt because I really, I didn't, I didn't watch the press conference. I haven't been to the Apple webpage in a long time. Speaking of innovation, Apple watches. Apple watches, yes. And by the way, we're we're really really. Really straying away. Oh yeah, we like so, we um, completely left the video game topic. We're now talking about Apple and all that other good stuff. Now the Apple watches. We were I don't we know were on a straight them. path, and then we then we crashed. Yeah, but at we, least we can get to keep going. Yeah. Anyway. So you do you hmm. know about the Apple watches? Yes, I actually I'm not sure if I want to buy one just yet, but like I'll wait until I see the, that. They're a bit more, a bit more reliable, I guess, mm -hmm. because they, they right now they don't seem to be. Hmm. How do I explain? They don't seem to have that many features, and it seems like you would need just a, you would need an iPhone for it to work. And I would assume that an iWatch would be better if it could just work by itself. So maybe don't update it with a software thing that'll make it work without the iPhone. But I don't know. Well, I don't think they'll really do that. That's kind of hard, because then you have to take the watch and have its own software and everything. It's better when it can just connect to something. I but know the watch a lot about already the... does have its software. I, I know, but it's kind of like, it's not the same. I, I do know about Android watches, because those are already out. And my favorite is probably the Moto 360. That's like the first one that actually has this circular face and not just a rectangle, and I hate those. So, basically... Those are interesting because they hook up with your phone and they can do basically what your phone can do, but without having to pull out your phone. Which, I don't know, pulling out my phone doesn't seem much like a hassle to me. It kind of seems like basic functions of humans nowadays. We all instantly, oh, check the time, instantly check the phone. I mean, watches have become obsolete. This is just a way of trying to bring back technology into watches, in my opinion. That's very true. Like, um, for example, uh, with the iWatch, there are some new features that will basically be able to make things a little more intimate between you and your other, like, friend who may own a, an iWatch. So you can send, like, these symbols. So you can send these symbols that are, like, a heart or maybe, like, a dot that could symbolize food or whatever. And you would send these. So, you know, it, it's basically, like, changing the watch forever yeah you know but also the coolest feature of it and i thought it was kind of funny but you can send the other person your heartbeat really you can do that yeah they can feel it because it has i think 
Oh, what is it? Haptic feedback? No, that's vibration for video game consoles. I don't know, but so basically, it'll... it'll scan my heart rate, and then I could just send you my heart rate, and you could feel my heart rate. Yeah, basically, because on the bottom of the iWatch, it just like taps your taps your wrist. That is rather interesting in it a also perfect works way. The same for notifications. So if you get a text on your phone, oh, you can feel a slight tap on your on your wrist and then you look at your watch also if you get a phone call the the watch will ring and to silence it you just cover your your arm with the that watch and that is really off. interesting and very informative but sadly we have to end the episode here we reached our time limit so thank you listeners oh, for listening well, yes thank you all for listening to this first show <laughs> and we'll or see episode. you next time whatever Goodbye. that shall be